Welcome back friends, Dan Vega here, Spring Developer Advocate at VMware. Today I want to talk to you about the history of Spring, and to do so, we're talking about Spring 1 at VMware Explorer. As I sit down to record this on August 3rd, 2023, we're roughly three weeks away from Spring 1 at VMware Explorer, which is taking place in Las Vegas, uh, August 21st through the 24th. Uh, so day one of VMware Explorer is going to be all spring content, and then throughout VMware Explorer we'll have uh, additional spring content. You can go ahead, if you're not registered yet, you can register now. You can check out the schedule and see all of the amazing talks that we have lined up. But what I'm here to talk to you about today is a cool little Easter egg that was found on the Spring 1 uh, VMware Explorer website. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away, I'm going to show you the Easter egg, how to get there yourself, We'll walk through it. This Easter egg was really well done, put together by the team at VMware. And I was really excited when I started going through that. So what I want to do is we'll go through it together. We'll, we'll talk about all of the things and really the history of spring. Um, I think you're going to really love this. Uh, so with that, I'm going to move myself out of the way, and we'll go through this. All right, so if you're on spring1.io, Go all the way down to the bottom here, but if you haven't been to the website, go ahead and check it out if you want to read through it. In the lower right-hand corner, there's this little gold leaf. Go ahead and click on that, and you are taken to the history of spring. So you're transformed to this little like 2D game. We have our character here, our spring character. His eyes are blinking. He looks really happy, excited to go. Um, I love just the visual effects of this. The score is zero. Uh, there's a little instruction there. Kind of reminds me of like Oregon Trail that says, hey, scroll or use the arrow keys to go ahead and start moving. So I'm going to use the arrow keys. So as we start walking, our little friend hits this box uh, kind of like a Mario style and says, in 2002, Rod Johnson publishes the book Addressing Complexities with J2EE. I uh, remember that uh, very much so. Even though I wasn't a um, Spring developer at that time, I was in struts around that time. And I remember the complexities that J2EE brought, so much so that it kind of pushed me in another direction at the time. <laughs> um, OK, so our, our little friend is going to move on. Oh, I love that. Jumps again, 2003. Rod, Jurgen, and Jan start the Spring Framework open source project. So if you're keeping track, this year is 2023. That was 2003. Yes, that means we are at a 20-year celebration of spring. All right, so our little friend's going to continue. Jump, grabs the coin in 2004. Spring Framework 1.0 is released. So cool. All right, here's a star. Can we grab it? Oh, it looks like he's invincible now. In 2008, Spring Security 2.0 is released. Uh, pretty cool. Spring Security 28, 2008. All right, so now we're going down this little pipe, again, Mario-esque, and we're starting to run. Are we on some lava? Oh, there's a red block. And I love just the little details, like the block has the Spring logo on it. You can see in the upper right-hand corner, too, our score is going up. 2011, Spring Data takes on no SQL workloads with Spring Data MongoDB, Spring Data Redis, Spring Data Neo4j, and Spring Data Gemfire. Awesome addition, and now Spring Data uh, has many projects uh, that cover both SQL and NoSQL stores. All right, so we jump, we grab the coin. In 2014, Spring Boot 1.0 is released, introducing rapid application development. And that really what it was exactly what Spring Boot brought to us, right? It allowed us to kind of start creating applications, focusing on the task at hand instead of the infrastructure and the plumbing. All right, so we're running. Oh, oh boy, there goes all the bricks. Um, in 2014, Spring Batch 3.0 was released. Wow, that's crazy. 2014. Oh, oh, here comes an ant. Oh, knocks it out of the way. 2014, Spring Integration 4.0 enables integration flows to be configured without XML. Oh, anything without XML is a great, great step towards the future. All right, so we're going up the pipe, up the pipe, all the way up into the clouds. Oh, my gosh, we're so high. I love that little, um, what is that over there? It's got, like, power levels. It reminds me of, like, Mega Man. Um, we got the moon up there. The moon's kind of, like, glowing. Again, our, our score is at 1,100. 
There's another spring logo. Let's see if we can hit it. 2015 Spring Cloud 1.0 is released, providing tools uh, to quickly build software for distributed systems. Uh, so yeah, the Spring Cloud project is massive these days, has a whole bunch of really great features uh, for building anything, really, um, anything we want in the cloud. And um, yeah, mainly focused on distributed systems um, and just giving us the tools that we need to, to build the applications we need at scale. All right, so we're walking. Oh, look at this. Looks like a TV. 2016 Spring Cloud Task is introduced, supporting short-lived microservices. All right, our guy's running, hits it. Spring Cloud Stream 1.0 is released, enabling event-driven microservices. And Spring Cloud Stream is one of those projects that if you haven't had to use it, um, I understand, but uh, you should go ahead and check it out. Um, if you're doing uh, event-driven microservices, and you want to, in, in most organizations, you're not just using one uh, event broker. You're not using just Kafka or just RabbitMQ or just uh, anything. You know, you're using multiple brokers. And Spring Cloud Stream really kind of enables you to bring all of those together. Oh, so this is cool. We're going to jump up here, grab the coin. In 2016, Spring Cloud Dataflow 1.0 is released, providing an orchestration service from data microservices. All right, we're going back down out of the clouds. Oh, back down to the water. And in 2016, Spring Cloud Dataflow for Kubernetes orchestra uh, orchestrates long running, so anything that we're doing with streaming and short-lived, uh, anything like tasks or batch data, microservices on Kubernetes. Oh, man, here comes some water. Are you going to jump? Grab that coin. 2018 Spring Cloud Skipper 1.0 allows app discovery and lifecycle management on multiple cloud platforms. Okay, this is my favorite part. Look at a boat just kind of going up and down. The spring flag is high in the air. 2021 Spring Cloud Gateway for Kubernetes automates the deployment of an API gateway service by applying YAML configuration objects to a Kubernetes cluster. Man, Spring Cloud Gateway is just such a great project. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, uh, definitely check it out. Head over to spring.io, go under projects, check out Spring Cloud and Spring Cloud Gateway. All right, we're going to jump. Oh, man, look at that sword. Are you going to grab it? Oh, man, he's got a weapon now. He's got the sword. In 2022, Spring Boot 3 and Spring Framework 6 enabled natively compiled applications to run more efficiently in uh, environments like Kubernetes via Graal VM. Uh, awesome. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Spring Boot 3, Spring Framework 6. I've done so much content on it. I've talked about it, what feels like across the US and hopefully this year across the world. Um, so I'm really excited about the changes there. OK, now we're going into, oh, this looks a little scary. Uh, there's some fire going on. Just love the artwork here. And it looks like I'm going into a castle. Oh, no. It shut on me. Now, this is cool. This is, uh, I'm feeling like very major, like law, last Bosque vibes. Like I'm coming to the end. I, I got to fight the last boss to win. I love the stained glass windows over there with the spring logo on them. I'm getting a little nervous. Uh oh, no nervous. Thank you, Spring. Congratulations on 20 years of innovation. Celebrate with us at Spring One. Oh, push the B button to continue your quest. Uh, so this is so cool. This is the end of this game. I have that high score over there of 2,000. And yes, uh, thank you, Spring. Thank you to the community. Uh, congratulations to everyone. 20 years of innovation. That means this year at Spring One, we are celebrating 20 years of Spring. You can bet there's going to be a party, a celebration of 20 years, and you do not want to miss it. So please join us there. So how can you join us there? Let's click this B button and find out. And there it is. It takes you back to springone.io, the home page, the register button right over uh, that way, you, right down there. Go ahead and click that to register. Obviously, um, I'm, I'm not just saying this. I'm going to be there. Um, I have a few talks. I'll be um, around the booth. I'm excited about VM, you know, Spring One at VMware Explorer. I'm excited about a lot of the sessions that I'm seeing on the schedule. But most importantly, I'm excited about seeing you guys. So if you are a 
a subscriber or have watched some of the videos here on the channel and you're at Spring One, please come up and say hi. Uh, I'd love to talk to as many of you as I can. But if you haven't registered yet, register now. Three weeks after this video has been posted, we will be in Vegas celebrating 20 years of spring. Uh, just really exciting. I haven't been this excited for a conference in a long time. So can't wait to see you all guys there. Check out the Easter egg. Share this Easter egg with others. It's a pretty cool little history of spring with some really great graphics. Kudos to the entire team that put this together. Uh, I really had a lot of fun going through that. And with that, I will see you in Vegas, friends.